this is basically what we're going to do. We're going to start with a general discussion of things that are the same for undergrads and grad students. So this is things like grading cutoffs, process, timing, those sorts of things. Then we'll address where there's a significant differences to the policy depending on what level you are and we'll just take some questions and roll with it. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Boots and Dr. Miller to kind of start us off with some general things that are the same for undergrads and grad students and things to know. Um, so Dr. Miller, maybe the easiest thing for everybody would to go through. We did solicit questions. We've also had a number of questions come in. And so we've prepared kind of a Q&A, but we would encourage you during the meeting as you listen to everything, if you have further questions, we thought the easiest thing might be to go through the, the answers that we have to the questions that have been posed, and then we can open the floor for further questions. And if we get asked a question or need clarification, um, we've got lots of great people on the call that can assist with this. Um, and thanks to Dean Gonzalez and our advisors for also, you know, being here today. Um, know that everyone needs to just take a deep breath. Like we will all figure this out. And while we don't have answers maybe to every single contingency, um, I, I have confidence that we will figure it out. So with that, Dr. Miller, do you want me just to start in maybe on the, the Q&A? and we'll kind of tag team through this. So the first question we have, um, what is the difference between no credit or fail versus a W, which is a withdraw? Okay, so this is um, maybe the easiest way to explain the difference. A W is a withdraw, and it means that you didn't finish the class, right? You withdrew before the class was over, and you don't get credit for that class. And so, uh, remember that there is a, a rule this semester that it doesn't count against you. This withdrawal doesn't go towards normal counts that we would hold you accountable for as a student in the catalog. On the other hand, a no credit or a fail means that you finished that class, but you're not getting credit for the class. You're not getting positive credit. In addition, in um, a fail at the grad level, results in a negative impact to your GPA. And I'm going to turn that over to Dr. Miller to explain what that means for graduate students. Well, so so yeah, the, the difference is that if you get a fail in a graduate class, it's 0.0, .0 grade points, right? So um, whereas if you get a credit or a, sorry, a no credit in an undergraduate class, it's, it's sort of like the class never happened. It's noted on your transcript that you took it. Right, but there's no uh, overriding effect on your on your GPA. And then, of course, the other thing that you need to keep in mind when you're thinking about GPA is that if you opt for a class and you opt into a grad class and you get a pass in it, right, um, that doesn't affect your GPA, right? So a pass is just a pass; it does nothing to your GPA one way or the other, except that it's going to obviously reduce the number of, uh, of of sort of credits you're dividing by, right? Thereby in increasing the effect of all of the other classes that you get grades in, if that makes sense. That's right. And can Thanks. you can you too address the timing and the grading cutoffs? Yeah. So let's get to that. Let Let me address one issue first, which is like the bottom line. What is the grade cutoff for a credit, no credit class? It is a C or better to get credit. That is very important to understand. A C minus, a D minus does not get you credit. And the same goes for pass fail at the grad level. And that is a very basic issue we're hearing a lot of misinformation on. It is a C or better. Um, so you, if you had a requirement as an undergrad and you had a C minus, you're better off keeping the grade so you can pass the class and it, get credit toward graduation as opposed to switching to a no credit. Yeah, and well, yes. I, I mean, mean, depending, right? But in general, right, I was going to say, I don't want to just say a yes or no on that. Let's graduate. for the questions. Let's just get through the policy, um, like kind of the basic facts, and then we'll get into the mud. Um, right. and, and Dr. Scotch also posed a question, that's mud. So I'll get to that. I think we'll we'll address some of these questions once we get through, like, what's the policy? What does it mean? Let's sure. do that first. And the grade cutoff for grad students is the same. 
it's a C or better. Yeah, so let, now let's, let's get into that. Let me let me get into that now. So what is the extended withdrawal deadline for fall 2020? This is a question. So extended withdrawal deadline only applies to undergrad students. It does not apply to graduate students on the extension for withdrawals this semester. That is very important to understand. So undergrad students who wish to withdraw from a class. So you didn't you did not pass that class. Um, it's going to be a negative for you and you just would prefer, you know, prefer to withdraw. If you wish to withdraw from fall 2020 courses, the absolute deadline is no later than this Thursday, December 10th before midnight. And let me be clear about what that process is. You have to use your UTD email and you list the courses you wish to drop or withdraw, and you must submit that to your undergraduate advisor. You must obtain a advisor approval through their UTD email. To complete your request, you submit the advisor approved request back to the registrar's office at records at utdallas.edu for processing. And then all completed requests must be received absolutely no later than 11.59 p.m on Thursday, December 10th. The student is responsible for all changes to their schedule. So you have to, as a student, you then have to follow up with your request by logging into our Orion and making sure that change happens and if not communicating. Don't just send it into Never Never Land and assume all will be well. Um, do I expect you to memorize that? No, I do not. And the, and the registrar's office has update is updating right now and will be releasing a fact sheet today um, that the registrar has worked with our Dean of Undergraduate Education, um, Dr. Murphy, as well as our Dean of Graduate Education, Dr. Gonzalez. And with them, they have created a fact sheet that will walk students through the processes that they need to do. So make sure that you go to the Comets United page and look at that and there is a link that will take you to this new policy and the links that come with it. Um, so the deadline to reiterate, the deadline for graduate students to drop classes has already passed. There is an only an extended deadline for undergraduates. Yeah, that's very important to point out. So thank you for yes. that emphasis. Yeah. Um, Dr. Miller, did I forget anything there? No, no. So so the, the policy on withdrawals for graduate students has not changed at all. Mm -hmm. That applies only to um, undergraduate students. And as Dr. Gonzalez has pointed out, that deadline has already passed. And right uh, as an addendum, also a good one from Dr. Gonzalez, you need to think about the fact that if you drop below nine credit hours, it could affect your funding if you're a funded graduate student. Yes. Um, yes. So the next question we got, what if I cannot see my final grade before December 10th? Can I get an extension as an undergrad for withdrawal? No, you may not. You must make a decision no later than 11.59 p.m. on Thursday, December 10th. You must have, you have some information in your grade book. If your final grade has not posted, remember that the, the final date um, for instructors is not this week for final grade submission. And while many of our faculty have been working very hard to get their grades in, not everyone has had an opportunity to do final grading. So that's just submit. for withdrawal for the undergrads. This, this is for undergrads only. Remember that they don't get to, they can't file an exception petition and say, well, I didn't see my final grade, so I couldn't make a decision whether I wanted to withdraw by Thursday, December 10th at 1159 PM. You must make that decision regardless of whether your final grade is visible to you. I just want to be very clear about that. There will be no exceptions on that. Um, and so if you have any question about that, I mean, you should be looking in your grade book. There should be enough grades for you to know and have a pretty good idea of where you're at. Um, but you have to make that decision by Thursday. Next question. What is the difference between no credit at the undergrad level and fail at the grad level on GPAs? I think we've already addressed that, um, but I want to be 100% clear that there's no impact to GPAs at the undergrad level. At the grad level, different story. 
right? It's a fail. So it's zero, um, zero grade points for those credit hours that then is, is then um, calculated into your grad level GPA. How many times can I opt into credit, no credit or pass fail? And when do I get to make these decisions? So this is one of the biggest areas of misinformation. Um, and so I wanna be very clear about this, Dr. Miller, and I wanna make sure you absolutely understand what this means. And whatever you hear that differs from this is wrong. I wanna be very clear about this. Students who are graduating must opt into credit, no credit, pass, fail between in a certain window. And that window is January 11th to January 15th of 2021. Students do not have access until January 11th to opt into um, to opt into whether they want to do credit, no credit, or pass fail. That is the first date it becomes available. But for graduating students only, they must have their final decisions in no later than January 15th. That's the first point. And Dr. Miller, make sure I don't say anything wrong here. The second point would be if you're a continuing student, unless there is a truly exceptional circumstance that is going on, we would encourage you to stay focused on your academic success and not make any decisions about pass fail or credit no credit until as far into um, after the spring 2021 semester as possible. In other words, wait and see as many of your final grades in spring of 2021 as possible and then decide because you have a combined total of only three courses between fall of 2020 and spring of 2021 that you can opt into pass fail or credit no credit. No more than three class classes combined across both of those semesters. Um, so a question I had was, what's an unusual circumstance? Um, so an example might be you're applying for graduate school. And and so you are a continuing student. You're going to be with us in spring of 2021 and you want you had a B minus on your transcript. And instead of that B minus going into your GPA as an undergrad, you, you have decided I would rather have a credit for that one class. Um, I'm, yes, a credit for that one class. So you opt in to credit after January 11th, and that means you have two classes left that you can decide on for spring of 2021. And the only reason you did that is because your final transcript, you already know, is going to have that credit on it. And you have to do a transcript for your law school application. And so you decide to opt in. Um, but that would be an exception, a true exception. And you might want to talk to your pre-law advisor before you make that decision or talk to your undergrad advisor or your graduate advisor or your grad director if you're applying for a PhD program and you're thinking about impact of having a grade versus having a pass fail. So that would be maybe some of the exceptions. Otherwise, the vast majority of you, with very few exceptions, we would encourage you to stay focused on academic success and not make any decisions until right before the final deadline. The final deadline to opt into those three classes, whether at the undergrad or the graduate level, is May 20th of 2021. May 20th of 2021 is the final deadline for opt-in for grad and undergrad students for fall 2020 and spring 2021 courses. Dr. Miller, did I explain that well? Yeah, I mean, I, I just to paraphrase, right? You 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 have three you have three bites at the apple. You shouldn't take those bites until you have seen the full apple, so to speak. Um, and you won't see that apple until the end of your spring semester. So there's a retroactive process here. It's unlike yes. a little bit what we did in the in the spring, right? Mm -hmm. Which was before the fact. This is after the fact, um, which is even better for all of you. Um, and so, you know, basically, you, you sh unless you have an extenuating circumstance, then you, and you're not a graduating student, you should wait until you have seen the full picture 
and then you can make up to three elections about what's going to be pass fail or credit no credit yes um and before you make any decisions at the graduate level so say you're a fast track student um, it is very, very important. There is a list of exempted classes. We're about to get to, we've got questions coming in on the chat, but we will get to that very quickly. Um, so what courses does this apply to? At the undergrad level, it is all classes. There's no catalog exemptions, so to speak. Um, at the grad level, that's a much more complicated question. I'm going to defer to Dr. Miller here on these questions so he can explain both for traditional graduate students and for our fast track students. Yeah, so so the difference here is that at the graduate level, there are a, a, a set of classes for which you are not allowed to elect the pass fail option. And the easiest way to understand those classes is to uh, go to the catalog for your program and see what are the required classes in that program that require a grade of B minus or better, right? In some cases, B. Um, and if they are listed in the catalog, then they are also going to come out on a list that we will put out at some point in the near future of, of courses that you cannot opt into the pass fail option for, right? So one way to think about this is if you are a, let's say, a PPPE graduate student, and you're taking a you know research methods one class okay or, or research methods two or 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 ethics and cult right any of those classes that are core classes then um, presumably you would not be able to opt into the pass fail option for those classes okay now here's where it gets tricky if you are a let's say gis graduate student and you're taking one of those pppe classes that's a core class for pppe but not for GIS, then you can opt into that as a pass fail class. OK, so it's a combination of what program are you in? OK, and if you are in a particular program, does that program place limits on the, the, the grades that you must achieve in certain classes? OK, so it is complicated. It's a little bit hard to think through. Um, like I said, we will be coming out with a list of these classes here. Um, uh, soon, Dr. Gonzalez points out that will be published on the COVID page uh, for the university, sort of where all of this information is getting funneled. Um, but uh, of, of course, your your program directors, your uh, your graduate program directors, and your program heads can also help answer these questions if you have them. But to harken back to the to the previous point, for most of you, this isn't an emergency decision, right? It doesn't need to be made right now anyway. Um, so. Uh, you know, unless you're in an unusual circumstance, right? I would just wait for the for the normal process to play out for us to get that list together and and vet it and then and then put it up. Couldn't agree more. So I think one of the main messages we have for all of our students is to slow down. Slow down. There is no emergency to make decisions on these things. The only pressing deadline right now is the December 10th deadline for withdrawals for undergrad students only. Everything else. It's January 11th, and I want to go back to what Dean Gonzalez um, reminded everyone on the chat. If you're an undergrad student taking graduate level courses for fast track, all the graduate le rules apply for those grad classes. So you don't get to play both, right? Your, your undergrad classes, the undergrad rules apply. The grad classes you're in, the grad rules apply. And so you have to remember that that you don't get to do both as a fast track student your undergrad classes undergrad rules that means you can withdraw from a class until december 10th can you do that for your grad classes that you're enrolled in as a fast track student no the grad rules apply there's no extended withdrawal deadline for you and the gpa issue is going to arise right if you fail a class there is going to be an academic penalty on your GP. You did not pass that class. If it's a, so if it's just, a, if, if it's a graduate class, right? If it's a grad track. class, that's right. If it's an undergrad class and you do credit, no credit, and it's a no credit, there's no negative impact on your GPA, right? Because we're not talking about grade points here. That's the difference between grad and undergrad. That makes sense. And we will come back to the chat after some of these questions 
will be answered through the Q&A. Um, uh, Dr. Boots, let me follow up with one. So mm -hmm. we did have one question. So our undergrads who are doing distance learning and may not be in Texas, that deadline for withdrawal is central time, right? Always so central time. Everything is on UTD time. So everything is central time. And so that's 11.59 p.m. But thank you, Dr. Bray, for that question. Um, so our students who are remote, um, and many of you are, um, just you need to remember, just like in e-learning, when you're taking an exam, everything is set to central standard time. And so that is the deadline. In the, I would encourage you to, con if you know you need to withdraw a class, now would be the time to contact your advisors. Maybe not the second, after our meeting. You need to contact the advisors um, and, and start to get those emails going. You don't need an appointment with them if you're doing a withdrawal, unless you have a question about the impact of that withdrawal. It's always better to ask the question before you do it than after, right? And so if there is something you're worried about, but what I have been reassured about is that if you are on say academic probation right now and you had a tough semester, what I have been told is that your academic standing will not be lost from your performance academically this semester. In other words, we're not going to dismiss you from the university if you didn't get all A's in all your classes. If your struggles continue, if you have concentrated disadvantage, if you've had major life events occur, the goal of this policy is to give flexibility to our students who have had those hardships. And so you will not be dismissed academically. But there is financial aid implications potentially, right? Um, and so, you know, your credits and things like that. But if it's a fail, it's a fail. I mean, there's still, if you were going to fail an undergrad class and you're going to get a no credit now, um, you still are retaking that class potentially, right? Because you didn't pass it. And, and we need you to think about the fundamentals, right? That your success in these sometimes entry level classes even are very important for you to be successful at the more advanced classes. So these are conversations you don't need to have all of them this week with our advising team. Please remember that advisors, there's a limited number of them and they are trying their very best to prioritize calls. So have patience with them because if you don't have a pressing need, they have students they have to talk to right now that are on a deadline. And so I would ask you to have some patience with our advisors and think about, do I need to contact them now or can this wait until after we get through the first week or two of classes in spring of 2021? If it can wait, let it wait because they'll actually have more time for you then. Um, let's, let's prioritize how we contact our advisors too with questions. I know that's hard when you have a question. Well, let, let, me, let me ask this question. So let's say I don't have a question right now. I'm a student. I, where should I go to find some of these FAQs? I know Dr. Gonzalez said the Commons University United. of COVID. Commons, Commons United, United has everything on um, what we're doing. And, and, and Dr. Gonzalez, um, are the, I don't think the facts are out now, right? They're, they're not yet. They're today. not yet. They're, I think they're going to be in today, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah. So that's what that's what our registrar just told me in a meeting just prior to this one. So I think they are coming. They're forthcoming. But like I said, there's no need to panic. Even if those facts aren't out, truly what we're doing today is exactly what that facts is going to do. Um, EPS decided to do our own because we didn't we know that there's a lot of angst and anxiety with students right now and we needed you all to hear our message that there is no emergency for you. The only pending deadline right now is for undergrad students December 10th this week final drop deadline before 1159 p.m. Even if you're graduating you will not have access to the portal until January 11th. So everyone can just take a deep breath and slow down. Unless you have a pending withdrawal, there's nothing imminent for you on decisions right now. Um, want to go to the next question, Dr. Miller? Uh, we, we did have a question about um, how this policy at the graduate level will affect um, funding um, for continuing students. Mm -hmm. And I'm not totally sure of the answer to that, to be quite honest. I don't know if Dr. Gonzalez can can chime in um, 
with whether or not uh, the the if a student let's say let's do a hypothetical that might make it easier if a student you know is funded and they uh, they they get a P in a class where they maybe had a letter grade of like a C or something like that and the program considers that uh, you know not satisfactory performance can the program make a decision then based on that to, uh, you know, like if they would normally in a normal semester withdraw funding for that, could they do that in this coming semester uh, for the same thing? Dr. Miller, if a class is not in our list of not eligible for pass fail, it's an elected course, then they can opt for the pass fail even if they get a C in the class and we have to accept that class towards their graduation requirements Mm -hmm. and towards their standing as a student. Okay. And that will not affect the grade point average at all. Right. Okay. Um, will, will programs, I mean, is it, a, is it a program level decision about whether or not then to continue with funding or is that a, is that a separate question? I, I, I'm, I'm still slightly confused. Well, if the funding is only if it drops before a certain GPA, if the student selects a pass fail, that they will not necessarily drop their GPA unless it is a, a greater course. So that means that they're still in good standing. Okay. There's another. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dr. Booth. I'm sorry, Dean Holmes. Um, so Roger Wong just asked a question about official transcripts. Um, I'm just letting students know. I am actually on chat with the registrar, so I've just asked that question. I'll get back to you all about that once I have an answer. Now, this uh, we have one question that I have no idea, and hopefully one of one of us does. Does credit no credit impact staff members who are using employee tuition assistance? So I guess for undergrads doing that, or even for grad students who are also employees, does that affect that policy? Do we know? I think that's a question for Colleen Dutton. Um, I have not been briefed on anything regarding employee policies, but that's a question for, I think, for human resources. Would you agree, Dean Gonzalez? Yes, I do. Yeah, so I would get in touch with your, um, with staff council or with, with Colleen Dutton's office and ask about how the credit, no credit policy will impact you, Alexander. Yeah, Denise, if may I, I, I may add a, a, an issue with graduate students and it may apply to undergraduate students too. If you are, are certified for graduation this fall, I will seriously be very careful in selecting pass fail or changing your status because that may affect your ability to graduate. So be very careful in selecting pass fail as a graduate student. If you already have been certified as a graduate student, that means that you have achieved all the necessary requirements for graduation. Uh, be very careful about a selection later on. Yes. Um, so I had a student send me send me a couple a student sent several questions. I'm just going to kind of put them out there. We're going to um, maintain anonymity here. Student sent me um, a message saying if I opt in to a change for credit, no credit for fall of 2020, can I change that course election and choose different courses if I don't do well in spring of 2021 and decide that I I preemptively chose a class and the answer is no. Be very careful when we say slow down and when you hear Dean Gonzalez, Dean Holmes, Dr. Miller all telling you be very careful about the decisions you're making, we mean it. There will not be a way to change it. If you opt in, for, say for example, you have three classes to choose from and say you decide I didn't do well in one of my classes this fall and I, I think I just want to a no credit on that class and you're an undergrad student and you go ahead on January 12th, the portal opens on the 11th and you opt in on the 12th to do that. And then you have spring 2021 and you decide, you know what, I had a, I had a C, you know, or a, I had a C minus in that other class, but I actually had more challenges in the spring and I did worse in those classes and I now have three classes I'd like to take no credit on. I would like to change my fall election and take that letter grade. Can I petition? The answer is no, you cannot petition. So when I say slow down, when I say wait to make those decisions, 
just like Dr. Miller said, before you take a bite of the apple, you want to see the whole picture. You want to see the whole apple and you don't know yet what's coming for you for spring. Our hope is that every single one of you academically succeeds and this is not even a consideration for you. But the realities are that we know a lot of you are having hard times. Wait to make decisions until you need to. And do any of you need to, unless you have a pressing issue um, in January or you're graduating? No, you should be waiting. Get through the spring as much as possible. You agree with that, Dr. Miller? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's no, you want as much information as you can possibly have, right? So, um, unless, you know, again, the only, the only real exception to this, assuming that you're not graduating, and there are unique circumstances around that, for instance, is pointed out. But if you're not, right, unless you, you know, are worried about this uh, transcript going to a potential employer or a, a graduate school, and that is a reason why you might want to make a change, barring something like that, you should wait. I mean, there's no, it, it benefits you to wait. Mm hmm and then I had a student ask the question and say, I've heard through the grapevines that we are going to get more classes in spring of 2021 if we complain enough. Those were her exact words to me. Um, let me reassure you, there is no plan to give more than the three classes that have currently been approved under this new policy that was just passed last week. So do not plan on additional courses becoming available for credit, no credit, pass, fail. And, and let me join in some of the other warnings that you've already heard on this call. If you plan to go to graduate school, if you are planning or thinking of going to law school, if you may want to go to medical school, if you are going to be competing for highly competitive jobs, maybe at the federal level, um, be careful about opting into credit, no credit, pass, fail. Um, we've already had one semester with those exceptions in spring of 2020, and having too many courses on your transcript that do not show your academic excellence is dangerous for your future. I cannot be more clear than that. Um, is you don't want to have more of this on your transcript than is absolutely necessary. And while you're hearing from maybe others that everyone is doing this, let me be very clear, not every university has opted into this policy and moreover, not every student will. And so students that are succeeding and getting good grades or great grades are who you will be competing against at that next chapter, at that next level. And so you want to do the very best you can in your classes and let your transcript reflect that effort as much as possible. With that being said, we understand that some of you have had extraordinary challenges this semester and that this might be a good thing for you. But for many of you, it is better for you to take your grades and faculty have been very compassionate by and large. I mean, I've had a few complaints but your, your faculty have accommodated no attendance. They have made, they have lowered stakes on assessments. They have changed the way that they grade and the components of their grading. If you have questions about your grades or you haven't gotten enough input from your professors, now would be the time to reach out to them and get that input so that you have an informed, you're informed in your decision making. Um, but be careful, this is not the solution to everything and there will be repercussions if you opt into too many classes on your transcript with pass, fail, credit, no credit, potentially. That would be my warning. Dr. Miller, you agree with that, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, can I take a letter grade and, and keep that now and make a screenshot and also take credit, no credit later and send proof of that to a potential employer or a graduate school. The only thing that will matter is your official transcript. So a screenshot of an e-learning gradebook or something like that, I can tell you as someone that sat on an admissions committee for a long time, that would not be considered in my deliberations or a committee's deliberations for admittance 
potentially. And, a, and an employer, I would argue, that might not be the best way to go with them right it, you're you look like you're trying to work the system know that once you opt into credit no credit or pass fail that official transcript is what matters dr miller you concur yeah i mean there's no um what's the word i'm looking for here there's no there's no perfect solution right no. um you for many many students right um this is not a not a good just because we're offering it to you doesn't mean you should do it right or take it as an option right you need to consider your individual circumstances what you're thinking about doing in the future and you need to think strategically about how somebody who is you know uh, thinking about employing you or letting you into their graduate program is going to look at this right um these people aren't dummies right and so um you just need to be you need to think about it right you need to think about about what it's going to look like at the end of the day um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it right um, uh, and but i do think again just to reemphasize, it means you should wait for sure to do it right um, there's no rush yep next question i got do i get my tuition money back if i opt into credit no credit or pass fail or if i withdraw from a class before this thursday no you will not get your tuition money back um, no matter what you do we are well be well well beyond so nothing in the policy allows for tuition reimbursement or i'm excuse me a refund i should say um so that will not happen um let's see are there any exclusions on credit no credit for undergraduates on on core classes or anything like that no but that is different, like we said at the grad level. There is a list of excluded classes. Let me get back to a question because I just got an answer from um, our registrar. Um, Roger, you had asked a question, let me find it. If fall 2020 graduates employers ask for transcripts, is the earliest official transcript available after the January 11th to 15th opt-in period? And that's for graduate, we're talking about graduating students. So I pose that exact question to the registrar and this is what she said. Students will be graduated after the January 15th deadline. If a student is needing a transcript earlier with their graduation certification, they can contact the registrar's office at graduation at utdallas.edu. For example, if a graduating student does not plan to elect to change to credit, no credit, and they know they will graduate, they can contact the graduation office on January 4th or later to see if they can get a transcript earlier. If a graduating student does, does plan to elect credit, no credit, then that transcript will be available sometime after January 15th, right? I would give them a little bit of a window. Um, if they need it earlier and complete the election early, they can reach out to graduation to see if we can get it to them earlier. So there's no promises there. Some of this is going to depend on volume and the ability of the registrar's office to get that all done. The most important item from the registrar and the message she wants you to hear, Roger, is do not order an official transcript until you have confirmed any changes made by looking at your unofficial student transcript. In other words, that will reflect the changes you have requested and that needs to be accurate before you order an official transcript. Dr. Booth, there's one other question that might be relevant for the registrar. So one student asks, is there going to be a special symbol attached to the credit on a transcript if it's a COVID credit? Where are you and what's the name of the student that asked that question? Uh, Frias Noel Eduardo. Okay. So he asks, is, so for oh, example, is, you have the transfer credit that might come yeah. in or something like that. Is it, is so, it going to be designated COVID? Dean credit? Gonzalez, please double check me on this. My understanding is that every semester that we have had COVID exceptions, that will be notated on the official transcript. That is correct. There will be a notation in there. Yes, there will be notations. But remember, students, so you understand, you may not be aware of this, every time you make a change to your official transcript, there is a notation that is made. 
And the reason we are not going to allow students to go back and forth and back and forth is that every single time your official record is touched, it must be notated. And we want your transcript to be as accurate and clear as possible. So that is why once you opt in, there's no undoing it. Thank you, Dean Holmes, for bringing that up. And I'm starting back up there just to make sure um, that we have other questions. So we have one that's kind of a follow up. Um, so just the graduation validation won't happen in January in general for students who've graduated. So, so just so students or, understand, graduation does not happen in December in any semester. Like all the grades have to be posted. Remember too that the university is closing December 18th. So it means our staff actually get to go home. They need a break. Um, imagine how much work this is for our registrar staff. They're going to be, I mean, in a normal semester, this is crazy time for our advisors, for our staff members across the university that are getting graduation certified. And so we're going to close on the 18th. We reopen on January 4th. What the registrar's office is going to be working on in this off time is they're going to be working to get the system up and ready for everyone on January 11th. And that won't be ready until just before it, it it's going to take some work they're going to do some piloting things like that and um, we've learned from some mistakes or things we could have done better in the spring 2020 semester and we've learned from that but they have a lot of hard work ahead of them in getting that system ready so in a normal semester you're the, the reason you don't get a graduation diploma while you're standing on stage is we haven't fully certified you and your final transcript has not been finalized yet and so that normally happens, my understanding, the earliest time is normally late January in a normal year um, where everything is kind of done and sent off. And so could this change things? It could. I think that you need to be patient. And if you have a, a real reason, not just because you want it to show your grandmother, right? Um, it's if you need a transcript, a final transcript for a compelling reason, like you've got an admission that's waiting on that or a scholarship that's contingent, always double check your unofficial transcript first. But if that looks final to you and all those changes that you opted into are there, that would be a time then to contact the registrar's office and ask. I'm going to post the information um, that the registrar sent me in the chat for everybody in case you need that email address that she mentioned just so everybody has that we have a another question and and so here's a student who's struggling to make a decision uh just because they might be applying to law school so there's a concern if they elect to use the credit no credit option you know, how is that going to be viewed by law school admissions, for example? So I just spoke to um, I just spoke to several attorneys about this. I'm, I'm actually recording guest speakers for next semester and a bunch of them were attorneys and we actually had discussions about this. Um, if our pre-law advisor, I don't know if Barbara Kirby is on the call by chance or maybe someone else that is comfortable talking about this, but what I've heard from everyone is you want as few credit, no credit on your transcript as possible. You want to show your grades and you want to be competitive on your grades, which is why we're stressing to students, you know, focus on your academic success. Um, Joseph, I see your question about grad school. Can we answer what law schools are going to say? This is what we don't know. How many other students in the pool of applicants that you apply with will have the same thing? And know that it's always hyper competitive, right? Every level you go to is, is going to be more competitive than the one you sit in. And so you want to be as competitive as possible. So the best advice I would have for you based on what I've heard from others who are in these spaces is that you do not want to take a credit, no credit on your transcript unless there's a compelling reason, unless that is really going to budge your GPA or you really had problems. And so uh, is a B minus maybe better than taking a credit where they think you might have gotten a D minus? I mean, if I was an admissions person and other schools have said a D minus is a is a credit. Do I want a credit on my transcript if I have a B minus? 
I don't think we can answer that question for you. I think you have to think about if I was an admissions counselor, what would I want to see and what is my best shot to get into law school? Yeah, I think that's important just because these are not uniform policies across universities. So yeah. it just it's they're not going to necessarily dig into the details to know where our cutoff was. They're not. And, and, and I don't think students should assume that. I don't think a student should assume that they're going to know that you had a C or better to get that credit. And I know you didn't have an A, right? Or you would have taken the A. So is a credit always better, like Dr. Miller said? No, it is not. Um, sometimes it's better to show your letter grade. They're going to know that you were in a COVID semester. Everyone's in a COVID semester. So, I mean, you could address this in, in an intent letter or an entrance letter. You could address the adversity that you overcame and a B or a B minus may not be the end of the world, but a credit leaves question about where you sat on that grading scale. So I guess my advice to you, I don't think anyone can answer this question for you. I think you need to look at your entire transcript all of your academic performance, and you know the extenuating circumstances you have faced. And I think you need to be prepared to explain what that impact was to you across our COVID semesters on the next step. Yeah, here's a here's a pretty detailed question. So we might have to check with the registrar. So students asking if I transfer a winter course from Dallas County Community, yep. will it be clear in the transcript? A transferred course rather than a credit no credit course yes yes transfers are always absolutely just like dean gonzalez said about ap classes we know the difference and people that look at transcripts all the time they know the difference between transfers ap classes and classes taken at utd it is very good and here's another question will we have a dean's list this this semester or in spring that is yet to be determined um but if precedent, and I'm not saying this is going to happen, I'm just talking about precedent. If you think about spring 2020, because we had pass fail credit, no credit, there was no dean's list. And so this is a possible consequence of the adoption of this program. And, um, you know, I think having dean's list is actually really important, um, but it dilutes what that what GPA calculations mean for Dean's List calculations once you adopt a policy like this. I don't know what that will mean, but we have not, I don't think that's been definitively answered. Dean Gonzalez, have you heard anything about that different? I I have not, but it, usually our office, we do not have a Dean's List. Right, uh, right, students. right. Um, I wanna make sure we didn't miss some questions up kind of earlier. Dean Holmes, I just want to yeah. make sure we didn't gloss over. We jumped around a little bit. Yeah, I think we've been pretty good. I'll double check here as well. OK, um, uh, while you're looking, I want to remind people we have some fun things coming up. So today at two o'clock, we have Dr. Dr. Kim is doing a pandemic series, uh, pandemic and policy practice and policy. And the, the topic today is who doesn't. So what, what's going on behind that should be fascinating. That's at two o'clock. And then tomorrow we have Dr. Boots at five o'clock doing slice and dice with the Dean and teaching you all how to make corn chowder. So I'm gonna pop these these uh, events here in the chat for you. And I, I hope you New can- New England corn chowder, very important caveat, New England corn chowder. Oh. What, yes, okay, New England corn chowder. And I will say Dr. Boots was kind to me and didn't make clam chowder because I can't eat fish or seafood. So yes. I'm looking forward to the corn chowder. Yeah. Um, yes, I hope y'all will join me. We're gonna be on a Zoom call and um, I'll be coming from my kitchen. So um, it'll be enough to, to feed you and all your friends and your family. Um, Let's see, it looks like we're pretty good so far on the questions that I'm seeing. I hope my employers will be considered about the extenuating circumstances from the pandemic. So me too, Noelle. Um, and, you know, but I think all of you also need to be realistic. This is why we're cautioning you about not taking, not ta just because, as Dr. Miller so, so why said, just because 
because you can does not mean you should. And so know that you don't have to take past, you know, credit, no credit option. If, if you've done well in a class, even if it's not your very best, um, if it's a B plus, I mean, I had a student email me that had a B plus in a class that was having angst over whether to go into credit, no credit. And I was like, why would you not take a B plus on your transcript? Why would you want an employer to think you might have gotten a D in? Right, so those are the questions yourself. I can't always answer that. Your advisors aren't gonna be able to give you a definitive, your, you know, your chair of your, pro, your program head can't answer those questions. You know what you've been through this semester, but if you get your foot in a door in an interview, are you gonna be able to explain what the impact was? Everybody is having impact right now. So I think all employers are gonna be looking at that very, very carefully for sure. Um, let's see, and you're welcome, Roger. Um, so let's see what else we have. So I'm just gonna recap here while you're looking. Mm -hmm. So that yep. COVID site, the Comet United's will continue to be updated as, as with statements from the registrar and, and things like that. Where will we post this recording? This is gonna go on our YouTube channel. Um, we will need to make sure that um, our great media specialist helps us with that. Um, and the goal was that students or, or interested parties who can be here could watch this asynchronously. So we would ask our students, please tell your friends that we had this town hall today. Um, students sometimes think if I don't get to attend, I can't really get any benefit from it. We're gonna be recording this um, and we're gonna be posting this. So if you have, if you're on social media, I'm going to say this, let me address social media. There is so much misinformation flying on Reddit and on other platforms and on WhatsApp and all of these different um, outlets that I know you students love and I love them too. So guess what, I'm on Reddit too. Um, and every night before I go to bed um, so that I can't sleep and I see each other, there is a lot of bad information on these outlets. If you have a question, the people to ask are the names that you see on this meeting today. It is not other students. And I'm not saying that peer-to-peer -peer, um, information is not important, but how do you know you're getting the right advice on something that is absolutely essential to your future? Should you go off of social media for someone that may or may not be a student here at UTD, who may or may not be doing well in classes and may or may not be giving you good advice, or should you be listening to people that our only concern is that you make the decision that's best for you? Please, social media, there is much wrong information going on there and it's causing a lot of confusion. And I think it's part of why students are feeling so panicked to make a decision. There should be no panic. We are setting the deadlines we are to give you space and time to make good choices. Well, we got a nice call out for providing credible information, so I appreciate that. We, we're we trying to, trying to help you out as much as we can. And, and Shabnam's already confirmed we'll have this on our YouTube channel, and all of you should be following our YouTube channel. If you're not doing that, um, please go and just Google that. Um, it's in the link. Oh, my, excuse me. So there's a link. You can just do that right now while you're thinking about it and go in and follow that channel. It'll actually notify you and, and you can come in and it'll load to your YouTube channel. But we post, there's lots of great information there um, and, and for you at all times. Just in terms of wrapping it up from, from my side of things, I just want to put out a, a reminder because it was, we talked about this a while ago, but just know that the policy is different for students in graduate classes, mm -hmm. that um, the key thing really to understand how the graduate uh, piece of this works is to understand that some classes will not count depending on what your uh, degree is, right? And language in the catalog. And we'll have those exceptions posted uh, where we mentioned uh, in, in a few days, hopefully. Um, and obviously, if you have questions about that, probably the best place to start is with the PhD advisors and your programs uh, or the program heads themselves, right? But, um, you know, we're all here to answer 
questions as best we can. Uh, one last thing I would stress is that there's been a really steep learning curve for us on this policy. Um, and so there are undoubtedly going to be things we don't know the answer to. So uh, be patient, right? I mean, that's what we have. If there is an overarching takeaway point here, it's j just chill out, right? We're, we're going to figure it out together. And there's no rush with some exceptions, right? And so those are the people that we're going to prioritize. Um, but uh, we're here to help you. We're here to help you understand the policy um, and to, you know, try to make the best choice uh, uh, for you, right? So, um, so reach out to us if you have questions. Yes. Yeah. And the, the last thing I'll say is just remember, you know, we've got probably one more semester of this, and then we'll be likely much more back to normal next fall. So I think it's important as, as we're all frustrated and we're tired of this and, you know, it's, it's not ideal, but it's also not going to be forever, right? So just kind of hang in there. And uh, I guess I'll I'll wrap up. 100%. Um, this is a we've had we have been scrambling for the past several days to prepare for this meeting. And your leadership team in the school called this meeting because we wanted transparency and we want you to know. So students, please be patient. Be patient and kind, and take deep breaths with your faculty, with your staff, and know that we all do care about you. Um, and if we don't have an answer, it's not because we don't want to have it for you. Sometimes it's that the process has not completely been worked out. There's been a lot of balls up in the air. There's been a lot of exceptions to understand, and we have been working really hard just getting ready for this meeting to try to be as clear as possible. And we realize too, we have a lot of staff and faculty on this call as well. So we hope that the meeting and the answers that we do have help you to better understand the policy and what it really means for you and we would encourage you again if you have questions as a student please reach out to your advisor but now might not be the best time if it's not pressing please don't get mad at your advisors because they're not working 72 hours a day like there is one of them and they are handling graduations, they're handling registrations. And so ask yourself, when is the right time to make that appointment if you need one? It may be after prime time. Um, and so I'm so grateful to all of you for, and, and we wanna say too, we're really proud of our students. We know some of you have had really big challenges um, and we're so proud of our EPS students. You all are exceptional. And thank you to our faculty who have worked so hard this semester to support your students and to do good things. And faculty, remember, if you have a student in crisis, graduation help desk, um, mm -hmm. you can go through Galaxy. You can report students for assistance and resources right through Galaxy. And to our staff, thank you for all you do to, to keep supporting students' success and your faculty and our work as well. So we're grateful to all of you and um, come make chowder with me tomorrow. We'll have some fun and and go watch Dr. Kim's presentation this afternoon and yeah, feed so, your brains. So and good luck on your finals. Yes, good luck. Left. Take a break and make some chowder and come learn about mask aversion and, and the rest. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yes. And wear and, your mask. And wear your mask and be careful. All right, see you at two. Uh, you can also reach out to any of us if you have any other questions as well. So, all right, take care, y'all. See you at two.